Welcome to video 12 in my rotational motion playlist, the moment of inertia tensor and intuitive approach. In this video, I'll break down what the moment of inertia tensor truly represents, focusing on the physics and intuition behind it, not just the math. I spent several days crafting this lesson to give you a clear conceptual understanding that most textbooks overlook. It's gonna be an exciting physics lesson. Let's get started. On this slide, I will analyze the three principal moments of inertia of a thin rectangular plate of width W, length L, and negligible thickness T. The coordinate system is located at the plate's center of mass. The x-axis divides the plate into top and bottom halves, and the z-axis divides the plate into left and right halves. Since the thickness is much smaller than the width or the length, we treat the plate as a two-dimensional object with uniform surface mass density. Recall that moment of inertia is a measure of how mass is distributed with respect to a chosen axis. Now I want to discuss how to calculate the moment of inertia of this plate about the z-axis passing through its center of mass. The formula for moment of inertia is m times perpendicular radius squared. To calculate the moment of inertia about the z-axis, we divide the plate up into many small mass elements. This black square represents a mass element. We take each mass element and multiply it by the square of the perpendicular distance from the z-axis. In the animation, as the plate spins about the z-axis, we project the motion onto the xy plane. For the point shown, this distance stays fixed at 0.75 meters. Even though x and y changes, the perpendicular distance to the z-axis does not. Therefore, the moment of inertia about the z-axis, which is defined to be the sum of m times r perpendicular squared, equals the sum of m times x squared plus y squared, because x squared plus y squared is the perpendicular distance squared. Now that we've understood how to calculate the moment of inertia about the z-axis, let's look at the full picture. The moment of inertia depends on the axis of rotation. And here we show all three principal moments. IXX, IYY, and IZZ. Each is calculated by summing the mass of each mass element times the square of the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. Each formula captures how spread out the mass is relative to the chosen axis. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hewitt. To compute the moment of inertia, we sum each mass times its perpendicular distance from the axis done with an integral for a continuous body. I explained this process in detail with examples in my video, Moment of Inertia, where physics meets calculus. This is the thumbnail. Here I'm showing the results of those integrals for a rectangular plate. On the next slide, I'll briefly walk through one actual integral to remind you how it's done. The results are IYY equals M over 12 times L squared plus W squared. This is the moment of inertia about the Y axis. IXX equals MW squared over 12. This is the moment of inertia about the x-axis, and IZZ equals ML squared over 12. This is the moment of inertia about the z-axis. I want to briefly remind you how to compute these moment of inertia integrals. I discussed these integrals in detail on a previous video in this playlist. IY, the moment of inertia about the y-axis is equal to this integral. DM is equal to sigma DA. Sigma is equal to mass over area. Area of the plate is length times width. Therefore, the IYY matrix element of the moment of inertia tensor is given by this integral. X is integrated from negative W over 2 to positive W over 2. Z is integrated from negative L over 2 to L over 2. And you get M over 12 times L squared plus W squared. The IXX and IZZ integrals are also computed. These are the results that we've already seen. Let's use these formulas to look at an example with numbers. We'll consider a plate of mass 12 kilograms, length 1 meter, and width two meters. The moment of inertia about the y-axis is five kilograms meter squared. The x-axis moment of inertia is four kilograms meter squared. And the z-axis is one kilogram meter squared. The moment of inertia is largest about the y-axis because the mass is spread farthest from that axis. It's smaller about the x-axis where the mass is closer in and smallest about the z-axis where the mass is closest of all. For this plate, it's clear that the mass has a different distribution about the x-axis, the z-axis, and the y-axis. The moment of inertia tensor is shown below. This lesson assumes familiarity with standard matrix operations like multiplication and transpose. In nearly every textbook, the tensor is introduced only after a long technical derivation. But that approach often leaves students unsure of what the tensor actually represents, how it's used, and why it matters. My goal is to take a different path. Rather than starting with a derivation, I'll simply present the tensor, both for discrete and continuous mass distributions. They're very similar, and show you how to use it in real example. From there, we'll build up a solid understanding of what the tensor means and how it works. With that intuition in place, we can circle back and derive the tensor later on. Notice that the diagonal entries are exactly the principal moments of inertia we previously discussed in detail, though we didn't refer to them as diagonal elements of a tensor at that time. In this slide, we calculate the moment of inertia tensor for a rectangular plate 
that is one meter long, two meters wide, and has a mass of 12 kilograms. We're gonna calculate the tensor for this specified coordinate system. The components of the tensor change if you use a different coordinate system. Using the standard formulas, we find the three principal moments of inertia about the x, y, and z axes as follows. Because the mass is symmetrically distributed in this coordinate system, all of the off-diagonal terms in the tensor are zero. This means there's no coupling between rotations about different axes, and the rotation tensor takes on a simple diagonal form. Ixx is equal to four. This tells how the mass is distributed about the x-axis. Iyy is five, and this tells how the mass is distributed about the y-axis, and Izz is equal to one. Previously, we've already worked out all of these integrals. The off-diagonal terms are all equal to zero. They're computed right here. For example, IYZ is equal to the integral of YZ dm, where dm is sigma dA, and you can see the bounds of integration agree with the coordinate system. This slide is titled Reflection Symmetry and Zero Product of Inertia. If the mass distribution has reflection symmetry across a plane, then the product of inertia involving that plane is zero. If IYZ is equal to zero, that means there's symmetry about the YZ plane. That corresponds to this picture. If IXY equals to zero, that's when this term and this term of the matrix are zero. That's the middle picture. And this is the XY plane. If these two off-diagonal terms, IZX equal to zero, then there's symmetry in the XZ plane. Bingo! And that corresponds to this picture. Rotating the coordinate system while keeping the origin at the center of mass changes how the mass is distributed relative to the new axis. This z-axis divides the plate symmetrically. Any mass on one side of the z-axis has a symmetrically reflected mass on the exact opposite side. As you can see, the moment of inertia tensor is diagonal. For this z prime axis rotated at 10 degrees, some symmetry is lost. This mass still has a symmetric counterpart on the exact opposite side of the z prime axis, but this mass does not. For this mass to be symmetrically balanced, it would have to have a counter mass over here, which is off of the plate. For this case, the inertia tensor is not diagonal. There are small off diagonal elements. In the original frame, the mass was symmetrically arranged about the z-axis, so the inertia tensor was diagonal. After rotation, the symmetry is lost. The lack of symmetry creates off-diagonal terms which reflect coupling between rotations about different axes. Here's a question to check your understanding. Let me know the answer in the comments section. If we rotate the axes by 90 degrees, would the tensor become diagonal again? What would its entries be? Now let's talk about angular momentum. Angular momentum is always calculated about a point. The moment of inertia is calculated about a line. The formula for angular momentum is R cross P. This is the standard formula we learn in high school. R is the position vector and P is the momentum vector. Imagine there's a plate and it's rotating about its y-axis with some angular velocity omega. If we wish to calculate the angular momentum of this plate, we break it up into many small squares and calculate the angular momentum of each one of the individual squares and sum them all up. At this moment, the plate is rotating out towards us. At this moment, the velocity vector of each one of these squares points out of the page. The cross product, r cross p, gives the local angular momentum. To find the angular momentum of this square, I take the radius vector from the origin, then I compute the cross product with the velocity coming out of the page, and that gives an angular momentum vector that points off in this direction. To get the total angular momentum of the plate about this origin, I sum the angular momentum of each individual square the net angular momentum is not aligned with the angular velocity. The angular velocity points in the y direction, the net angular momentum points off in this direction. This misalignment is due to the asymmetric mass distribution. How do you get the angular momentum from the inertia tensor? This is the moment of inertia tensor that we've already introduced earlier. The inertia tensor depends on the chosen coordinate system. The matrix shown below represents the inertia tensor for a square plate of side length L, calculated using the coordinate system shown on this slide. This is the z-axis and the y-axis, and the origin is at the lower left corner of the plate. It's called a tensor because its components change with coordinate system, reflecting how the mass is distributed about the different coordinate planes. Notice the inertia tensor is not diagonal, indicating an asymmetric mass distribution distribution. The z-axis obviously has a mass asymmetry. Any mass on this side has no counter mass on the opposite side. On this slide, I have sample calculations for two of the matrix elements of the inertia tensor for this plate relative to this coordinate system. For example, IYZ is equal to the integral of YZ dm. dm is sigma dA, dA is dy dz, and the bounds of integration are y goes from 0 to L and z goes from 0 to L. So we've worked out the form of this tensor in terms of mass and length. If the plate is a mass of 12 kilograms and a length of one meter, this is the moment of inertia tensor of the plate relative to this coordinate system. Angular momentum is calculated by multiplying the moment of inertia tensor by the angular velocity vector. L equals I omega. Omega is the angular velocity vector, 
which tells the components of the angular velocity in the x, y, and z direction. If I rotate this plate about the y-axis with omega in the y direction, omega equals 0 omega x, some amount of omega y, and 0 omega z. Omega is all in the y direction, but the angular momentum i times omega has some y and some z component. Omega and angular momentum are not aligned. Similarly, if I rotate the plate about the z-axis, the angular velocity is all in the z-direction, but the angular momentum is both in the y and the z-direction. When the mass is not symmetrically distributed about an axis, rotation about that axis results in angular velocity and angular momentum vectors that do not align. Why do principal axes matter? Principal axes is one where mass is symmetrically distributed, so when an object spins around it, angular velocity and angular momentum align. If the mass isn't symmetric about the rotation axis, those vectors point in different directions, and a torque is required to keep the object spinning. This happens because asymmetric mass distribution disrupts balance. To finish the video, I'm going to do an example where we find the principal axes. Imagine a square plate of mass 12 kilograms and side length 1 meter. This is the moment of inertia for the plate calculated in this coordinate system. Notice that this moment of inertia tensor is not diagonal. This indicates that the x and y axes are not principal axes of the object. To determine the principal axes, we need to compute the eigenvectors of the inertia tensor. The procedure for calculating the eigenvectors of a matrix is covered in many sources on the internet. To save time, I'm just going to present the results. This is the characteristic equation for this moment of inertia tensor, and these are the three eigenvectors and their corresponding eigenvalues. Vector v1 has an equal magnitude in the y and the z component, and they're both positive. Vector v2 has an equal magnitude in the y and the z component, and one is negative, one is positive. The eigenvectors define the directions of the principal axes. These are the axes about which the mass is symmetrically distributed. They are known as the principal moments of inertia. For this example, the x-axis remains a principal axis, while the other two are rotated combinations of y and z. By shifting the origin from the corner to the center of mass, we can clearly see the symmetry in the mass distribution. This line corresponds to vector v1, and that divides the plate into two symmetric triangles. And this line corresponds to vector v2, which also divides the plate into two symmetric triangles. The eigenvectors point along the directions where the mass is mirrored on either side. To conclude the presentation, I want to talk about the location of the origin. The moment of inertia tensor depends on the origin and axis orientation. If the origin is at the center of mass, the inertia tensor reflects the true symmetry of the object. If the mass distribution is symmetric, the tensor becomes diagonal in the principal axis frame. If the origin is not at the center of mass, off-diagonal terms can appear due to the offset, even if the object itself is symmetric. These terms can be misleading. This is why in rotational dynamics, we typically shift the origin to the center of mass using the parallel axis theorem. Doing so isolates the shape-related contributions to the inertia tensor and allows us to separate the rotation about the center of mass from the motion of the center of mass itself. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H acephysics.org math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis